G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to a plane that is so bad that it's kind of gotten me addicted. This is the Tornado F3 and while I do say these words quite harshly, I am admittedly quite fond of the plane. It's just something that I've seemed to have sort of fallen in love with because it's a, a really strange aircraft but it's also got a weird charm to it. Now before we get into this video, I'd also like to tell you about the charm of today's video sponsor, which is greatly appreciated to support the channel, and I hope you guys give these guys a little bit of love. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. VPNs such as ExpressVPN can be an excellent tool to make internet browsing safer, more private, and more accessible. ExpressVPN adds an extra layer of protection by encrypting your data, which can save you the heartache of data theft, including passwords and credit cards, while using airport Wi-Fi or even your school or work networks, which are just as at risk of compromise. You can also give ExpressVPN to a family member who's less internet savvy to protect them from suspicious links that might steal their data. ExpressVPN's encryption and traffic routing also makes it harder for prying eyes to monitor and sell your user data. For example, UK and Australian ISPs are required to store browsing history, DMs and app usage for up to two years, and US ISPs can legally sell this data to ad companies. ExpressVPN also grants you access to region locked content and allows you to access parts of the internet that may be blocked in your country such as Facebook or YouTube, allowing for a more open internet free from government censorship. If ExpressVPN sounds like a tool worth investing in, head down to the link in the description below and get your first three months for free. So this plane having its little piece of charm about it still doesn't really make it a good plane. Unfortunately, the F3 is placed at 11.3 uh, which is actually a fair BR for this plane, but the unfortunate bit is that it sees some top tier combat that really just outcompetes it by quite a lot. And whilst looking at the F4S and the F4J, these planes can actually hold their ground, and you know, even the MiG 23s can hold their ground alongside them. Uh, but the F3 is really in struggle territory, and whilst it's got a couple of little aces up its sleeve, namely the 9Ls and an absolute metric ass ton of flares, it really tends to struggle a little bit and of course this is all part of balance and this is all you know not the end of the world and this is why I kind of find that the plane has a little bit of charm rather than just throwing it in the dirt and calling it a piece of trash. This plane is really fat and the fact that it struggles to manoeuvre, in fact I would possibly call this plane the single worst dogfighter at top tier and whilst dogfighting isn't really a thing that happens at top tier as in like the super sort of the subsonic guns only type dogfight dogfighting also you, you know if a plane has a good dogfighting characteristic then it's got a generally good maneuvering characteristics which means that you'll be able to accelerate you'll be able to turn at low speeds you'll be able to sort of hold your own in a situation that might be a little bit spicy and a little bit dire this plane has none of that and in fact it is an entirely offensive aircraft and if you are any slightly on the defensive you're in panic mode and you'll see this sort of later on in the match where I really do struggle to be on the defensive because this plane is just not capable of that full stop and I don't really know why it doesn't seem to be able to pull a whole lot of G's so maybe you know maybe there's a, a fly-by-wire type thing that's been put in similar to the MiG-29 and the uh, F-16 but it just seems to be unable to do that at pretty much all speeds. So uh, I guess it's just because the plane's obese, it's been eating too much fish and chips being a British plane, uh, maybe some maybe some curry and chips, something like that. Um, it's really just really struggling to do these sorts of dogfights. But of course, on the flip side, you have that ability to maintain your speed in maneuvers. Uh, of course, whilst you're not maneuvering much, you're retaining a lot of that speed because you're not turning the plane 50 degrees and then expecting you to sort of maintain all of that speed. And whilst I am sort of cruising around at 1350, which is about as fast as a MiG-21 can go, um, a little bit more actually, the MiG-21 breaks at 1360, but at these sorts of speeds, you're sort of more than able to just zoom around the battlefield and do most things. Uh, MiG-23 here doesn't even see me coming. Easy, easy kill. I'm basically starting to look on the radar, look out beyond the beyond the horizon, if you will, beyond visual range, beyond spotting distance, uh, to see if there's anything out there that might tickle my fancy. And of course, I'm sitting here, I'm getting pinged by the uh, RWR, there are a couple of missiles coming in and you know if I stick low enough to the ground cover I'll be able to mitigate that pretty easily and uh, looks like I can quite quite easily. Uh, now this F4S is coming in and it's going to be a fairly straightforward situation here. His closure distance is uh, pretty good 
we're coming in three kilometers, two kilometers, and uh, and an easy kill. So uh, that's pretty much all she wrote. And of course, these planes, like the uh, Tornado F3, uh, anything with sort of those missiles, anything with that sort of longer range capability, uh, but particularly this plane, I like to use on the periphery using my longer range missiles to kind of eliminate the enemies on the periphery, on the uh, on the outserts, on the flanks. And then once the flanks have been dealt with, I will tend to go in towards the center and that's where I'll use my IR guided missiles. Now, I have noticed that there are a couple of enemies that are sitting around uh, and it looks like they might be sort of at those higher altitudes and these are potentially very, very easy pickings provided that the enemies below me don't pitch up and engage. And, and I find that that is a very, very common occurrence. So you have to be extremely mindful of the enemies that are below you before you engage the enemies above you. Now, it looks like these MiGs are, you know, somewhat preoccupied. There's an F-14 here, but the MiG-23 is going to be the first to get it. The F-14 is going to come after it. And then I'm going to try and get this MiG-23. As soon as these bloody flares calm down, it's not really working. There it is. It finally hits. Uh, and he might be the only kill here that I get out of that little run. And this is, again, a fairly frequent fixture of A9Ls. It doesn't seem to be that they are as potent as they used to be. Um, and you know what? I am indifferent. I don't really care. I'm just going to sort of deal with the hand that's given. But it looks like a lot of the enemies have somewhat disappeared. This F-14 might probably be the only one that I'll be able to get towards the end of the match. Provided that the enemy above me is definitely an enemy. There he is. His F-14 is fairly far away. But this F-14 is more of a threat. He's heading towards me. He's got a higher possibility of launching a missile. Uh, and he needs to be dealt with very, very quickly. So I set him on fire and quickly head towards the other F-14. That's kill number four. That's a you know, pretty nice bargain if I do say so myself. Uh, and I'm going to load up my very last Skyflash Super Temp and give it a red hot go. See what happens. I'm going to send it at about 11 kilometers, and 11 kilometers is about the territory that you uh, want to start releasing those missiles. It is not quite as long range as the uh, as the good old AIM-7Fs. I personally think the AIM-7Fs are a little bit better, but of course, uh, it's just sort of the the, the game that you're thrown or the the uh, hand that you dealt with, if you will. Uh, the AIM-7L, or the AIM-9L rather, comes in, and I think that's going to pretty much make ground, and that's an easy ace. Uh, normally, this plane does really, really well when you have plenty of enemies that are sort of tied up, uh, or you're engaging 1v1, or you are just simply able to get your missiles off uh, and not have to worry about the enemy firing back at you. That kind of goes for pretty much every other plane, so you can kind of just apply that to every other plane and then you say well you know if I can do that with the Yak 141 with the MiG-29 with the F-16 with the F-14 with the F-4 Phantom then uh, surely this plane is nothing really remarkable and you would be correct unfortunately this plane really doesn't have a lot going for it but I just really find it fun I find the character of the plane fun I just there's something charming about this plane even though it's a bit of a turd and I just don't understand why so I thought well, I might just make a video on it and just sort of talk about how I feel this charm about this plane because it's just it's just strange. It's just this sort of British charm, maybe. Maybe it's this sort of dorkiness. Maybe it's this underdog effect, if you will. Uh, but this plane really does have an interesting way to fly it um, simply because it's just not very forgiving. And I think that might be the attraction to it. Of course, uh, I'm someone who tends to like underdog planes and tends to like the uh, underdog challenge if you will but of course we are going to move on to this match here and I believe this is a match where I am uh, sort of mostly down tiered uh, it's again this new map here very high altitude and of course when you're at higher altitudes your sort of turning capability matters a little bit more you don't really have as much engine thrust um, your engines just flat out aren't able to breathe as, as well because of the altitude um, and so you do end up with a sort of slightly lower performance than you would at sea level of course we kind of default here to around three and a half thousand meters which might not sound like a whole lot uh, but it actually does make quite a difference and i noticed that on these higher altitude maps um, in general your turning capability and your energy retention is uh, greatly reduced so you do have to be careful and in the tornado f3 you have to be more so because this plane is just like i said quite unforgiving. Uh, we're going to go around again on the periphery. I would consider it fairly foolish to go straight in and just sort of YOLO charge your opponents, regardless of, uh, you know, what map and even what game. 
uh, it's not just a war thunder thing, but you know, if you hang around on the peripheries, you might find that you are able to pick up a few more kills than usual. Either way, this F4S is looking kind of juicy, and we're going to follow him in with that uh, Skyflash Super Temp, and it's going to strike beautifully. Again, the F4S's are, I don't know, I, f I feel like I'm shooting fish in a barrel, but at the end of the day, these guys are enemies nonetheless. There's a Kornas right there bes beside me, so I've just got to avoid him, and this other F4S is going to get it too. Uh, third Skyflash Super Temp goes out. I'm fully expecting an R24R or an R24ER, but it is just too late now. I'm very, very, very lucky there. I think that's an R24ER, judging by the way that it just couldn't quite snap on as quickly. Now, I've gotten three kills with three missiles, and I'm about to try and make a fourth here. I noticed that there is an enemy behind me. I am not going to turn for him, because I've noticed that this guy is in front of me, and if I turn around, I'm probably going to get yeeted by the guy that is approaching from the back. Uh, it looks like this guy might be some sort of uh, F-14 that's done his business with the AIM-54s, uh, but I'm not really sure yet, and I can't quite confirm. So I'm going to be that guy that follows him in and see what transpires. It looks like he is. It looks like he's running away. There's a sort of 200 meter per second closure rate, but he turns around, and that 200 meter per second rapidly turns to 400, and so this MiG-23 is going to get it. The... Uh, the flares don't really do much, or the chaff doesn't really do much for him, and that gives me four kills with four missiles, which is absolutely excellent for me, and this is the exact situation that you want to be in with Tornado. You want to have a friend that is decently maneuverable, and you also want to have plenty of enemies coming straight in a head-on towards you, because of course, your pulse doppler has that sort of uh, head-on, or that HDN, it basically means that it is head-on mode, it's a little bit more susceptible to notching, so you're not really going to get those crazy sort of weird ass side shots but you are very easily going to get sort of head-ons at uh, decent height all those sorts of things all those beautiful things and uh, once again just having a look at our speed we're cruising around at Mark 1 but of course that's uh, 1200 in I believe it's true airspeed uh, 900 or about a thousand in uh, yeah, indicated airspeed but of course you got to remember that we're not often able to get to that really really top end speed and of course, our maneuverability is going to be lower. So using this plane as a missile bus is pretty much the best way that you can deal with it. And using that as a missile bus is the exact way that I've managed to do it here. Uh, I've played plenty of matches in other aircraft, or, but particularly this one on this map. Uh, and I have noticed that this is pretty much the best strategy that you can employ because you bleed speed too quickly. And uh, if you could make your opponents bleed speed, then you have a very, very distinct advantage because then you can swoop in with a missile. And of course, if they're not paying attention or if they're too slow, uh, then you can really, really easily get them. And, you know, that's a that's an easy kill uh, or that's something that you can very, very easily, you know, make work, I suppose. Now that F4, I'm, I'm starting to think that I don't really have the range on the M9s as I, as I wished, uh, but that one comes in pretty quick uh, and it definitely does not make its mark. So you can see how slow I'm turning. I'm pretty much going as hard as I can. Uh, this F-16 looks like he might just eat that missile, and it absolutely does. So there's kill number four, and I'm looking, sorry, kill number five, and I'm looking for kill number six here. So again, we've got ourselves a nice easy ace, and uh, we're just trying to make that number six. You can see the F-4, how uh, much I am just struggling to make this bird turn. And once I let this one go, it's probably not going to make its mark unless I get super lucky, but flares at the last second. And again, I'm, I'm just trying to get the plane to bloody move, and it's just not moving because it's so bloody fat, and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. You just can't use this thing in a dogfight. I've pretty much lost a dogfight to every plane that you can imagine, uh, and I would like to dub this plane the most obese plane in War Thunder, and yes, that's even more obese than planes like the B-29 because I'm very convinced that a B-29 would beat this in a dogfight. So, onto the last match here, again on the, uh, I think it's the Pyrenees map, uh, and we're going to start off, this is a, a fairly slow start, but it's an absolute banger of a match, and I honestly think that this perfectly exemplifies the plane. Now, we are in a full down tier, so this is the maximum potential of the plane, although not quite the maximum, because again, we're flying at 4,000 meters, and 4,000 meters is suboptimal for our maneuverability, which is already piss poor as it is. So I'm just trying to track this Kfir, and I'm probably just not going to get it. I almost dogged myself there into the mountain, and I'm just 
just flat out not able to make a mark here. This tornado, again, looking juicy. I'm going to see if I can launch an A9L, see if he's not paying attention, and then make my way downtown, walking fast and chasing the other tornado in front of me. That 9L strikes way too easily, and it looks like the tornado IDS was not paying any attention, and now pays a big fat repair cost. I can't find the Kefir at all, so I'm going to pretend it doesn't exist and keep moving forward. Hopefully, I can uh, bring some, some tears in to this tornado, but the Kefir shows itself very, very quickly. Uh, 600 meter per second closure rate. This is looking juicy, but unfortunately for me, the, mis the uh, missile donks itself into the ground, and it's a Kefir canard. I'm just not going to entertain that. I'm going to keep moving in a straight line and hopefully not get chased to the ends of the earth by the Kefir canard, which is a very low likelihood of happening. Of course, there's another Kefir, which I didn't realize at first, and it's uh, now a really dicey situation because the Kefir is actually faster than me, at least at sea level, uh, so I don't actually know if it's going to gain on me here. I need to be really careful that I don't destroy all my energy, and I need to be careful that I don't let my team get destroyed by all of the enemy's energy. So I'm going to have to draw this out a little bit. I'm going to have to just travel in a straight line. There's a third Kefir that might pose a threat here. It's about four kilometers away. Um, and I just I just have to run away. I've got no choice here. There's a MiG-23 that's giving chase as well. And this has gotten me in a real pickle. I have nothing that I can do defensively because I'm at the limitations of the plane. I'm not going to engage with a Kefir. I'm not going to engage with a MiG-23. I'm going to lose a dogfight against them, even if it was a one-on-one, -on -one, even if the conditions were favorable. Um, the only thing that would really stop me in a dogfight against the Kefir is if the Kefir ran out of fuel and I didn't. So it's really, really dicey. I'm going to sort of head back a little bit. I'm going to climb a little bit and I'm going to wait for the MiG-23 to turn away. It just so happens that I'm heading towards my airfield, um, which is a bit of a pussy strategy, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to take it. I'm in a plane that really just doesn't have any other option. You can also see that my team is very rapidly doing the heck and disappear. And just as the MiG-23 goes around, I'm going to follow in around. And again, you can see that I'm hanging onto that speed. I'm still supersonic after almost half a turn. And it's really just incredible how much this thing holds onto its speed. So here I am going to make my way back and hopefully find something that is going to head on me. And there I can use my Skyflash Super Temps and hopefully thin out the enemy numbers. There is a tornado there that could use some help, and it looks like he's doing the uh, the same tactic that I did. What a surprise. It's a it's a bloody terrible plane. It's a big, fat bust of a plane, and when you only have two 9Ls, it's, you know, not very entertaining, but this uh, MiG-23 eats a big, fat missile, and that's great news for me. This uh, guy coming towards me with the Kefir, it's also looking pretty dicey. Unfortunately, it looks like I might not be able to get to him in time, Harrier versus Kefir, I consider the Kefir to be the absolute winner in this situation. If you are not going to win, then I don't understand uh, why you would. But of course, the Kefir is using his missiles. It looks like the Harrier might have been able to get away because the Kefir does bleed a lot of speed in turns. And I'm just hoping that some of these flares don't get picked up by my A9L, which I'm going to send well and true on the way. And it looks like it is going to strike home just as he rounds the mountain. And that gets me kill number three. I'm going to line up myself another guy right here. Uh, the Kornas is probably who I should have gone for. But this Kefir is also looking really, really juicy. And he's not losing any altitude. He gets that uh, death right at the perfect time. He gets set on fire. And I'm going to go into the vertical because a Tornado v Tornado, I'm very confident in it. I'm, I'm quite confident. So here we go. We're going to roll over. I did hear that uh, supersonic boom. And I'm just wondering who it might be. I think it's that friendly F5, but, you know, I would hate to take a chance. The Tornado and the Kunas are the ones that are the uh, guys to beat at the moment. And it looks like they're pretty engaged already in dogfighting. And it looks like they're pretty slow, actually. You can look at my airspeed and consider how much I'm closing in at them. Uh, I'm probably going to get myself in within no time at all. Hopefully this Tornado ignores the missile because the missile knows where it is but unfortunately I don't think the tornado does and the Kornas is going to come in and try and evade this guy that's uh, latched onto his six but of course I don't really want to launch an AIM-9L at him just in case something happens and that F5 goes right in front. Now it looks like the Kornas is trying to get a little bit of space and the F5 is lagging a little bit behind so I'm going to launch a missile. I don't think that that F5 is going to make the kill and so I go in with the M9L and that's kill number six. So that's a really impressive number 
for the Kefir, uh, for the uh, Tornado, because the Tornado, quite frankly, is just not that capable. And whilst I say that, and I've gotten all these kills in this video, you should see all of the other matches where I've come off second best simply because of the way that the plane is. If you play it like a missile bus, if you have teammates, it's great. It's good. But then again, so is every other plane. The F-14 could do the exact same thing. The MiG-29, the same thing. The F-16, the same thing. The Phantoms, the same thing. The MiG-23, the same thing. The Vigan, the same thing. It doesn't really change. It's just the situations that you're able to put yourself in. And frankly, this plane is the worst at that. And that's why it's 11.3. And honestly, it's fine. 11.3 is fine. Fighting 10.3s is a ch it's it's a little bit unfair. Just just a little bit. It's pretty quick, but you know, I would hate to fight this thing in a Mirage 3E, for example. I've been flying the Mirage 3E. I hate it enough. I will make a video on it very soon, but fighting the tornado would be an absolute nightmare. And uh you know, I'm glad I don't see them enough. Um, I see lots of other 10.3s that, or 11.3s, and quite frankly, that's quite enough to deal with in the Mirage 3. But this is kind of fine where it is. It's kind of a sort of problem with battle rating compression. Um, but of course, I don't really think we should open up the BRs just for like one or two planes. And in this case, the Tornado is one of those planes that kind of is a victim of BR compression. It's okay. It's fun. It's got a charm to it. But of course, don't expect to be carrying matches in it. Don't expect to be um, dominating the battlefield because it's just not capable of it. And I have to come out and say that. Otherwise, you could very easily call me a liar. And I do feel very strongly about this plane. I really, really love it. But it is just such a fat bastard that it really makes the average player run away from it. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching. That'll do it for today. Thank you to ExpressVPN. Do check out their link in the description. That helps me out immensely if you do. And of course, if you would like to purchase something, you can purchase that uh, the, the deal from ExpressVPN. You're obviously, my decal, everything else in the description. But until then, take care, and I'll catch you next time.